Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com. Today, I'm going to teach you how to rattle can your engine bay. Now, this is just one of many ways to rehab an engine compartment. Of course, you could always take everything out and have it professionally painted. That was a little bit more time and money than I wanted to spend, so I figured I'd go ahead and rattle can it. I'm going to give you guys some tips and show you exactly how I did it. These steps are going to go way beyond just cleaning the engine bay. First, we want to remove as many things as possible. For this job, I had the engine and subframe completely out of the car. This is going to reduce the amount of prep work and taping that we're going to have to do. The more you remove, the easier this is going to be and most likely the better job you'll be able to do. Next, we're gonna wanna clean the engine bay. We're gonna wanna get it as clean as possible. I pushed it outside to use the power washer to remove as much dirt and grime as I possibly could. Also using degreaser to clean every area that I could get to. If you're gonna be doing it this way, make sure you tape everything off to prevent any water from getting in the cabin of the car. Next, we're going to be taping and covering everything. When you're doing this, remember this phrase, if you do not want paint on it, you need to cover it up. We also wanna make sure we're smart with where we tape. Notice here that I taped up underneath the fender so that I didn't have any tape lines on the engine compartment and I also didn't have to worry about getting paint on the fender. This also gives a nice clean line if in the future I wanna have the outside of the vehicle painted. If you have anything odd shaped or round shaped, I highly recommend using foil to cover it up. The great thing about foil is you can form it to just about anything you want. It doesn't leave any residue at all and it won't take the paint off of something that might already have paint on it. If we were to use tape on these brake lines, it would peel the coating right off of it. If you're gonna use foil, don't buy the really, really cheap stuff. Spend a couple extra cents and get the stuff that's a little bit better quality or the heavy duty kind. It holds much, much better. If you have any bolt holes or things like that, a really great trick is to roll up a foam earplug and shove it down in the hole to let it expand and fill that hole. The further in you get the earplug, the more likely you'll be able to get an even coat of paint. So make sure it's down as far as it'll go. And while you're taping and painting that, if there's anything else in the garage you don't want paint on, make sure you cover it. This table is about 15 or 16 feet away from the, where we were painting, and it's still got paint dust on it. In a perfect world, we would remove every bit of paint with media blasting to ensure that we get the best possible coat and coverage. In this case, that's not really feasible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a paint prep spray and we're gonna clean and clean and clean to make sure we get any loose paint any wax, any grease off of our surface. We also want to make sure that we scuff any old paint as well. This is usually the part that takes the longest to do, and don't forget to work in a well-ventilated area, wearing safety glasses and a mask and gloves, because this stuff usually really smells bad. Now, when it comes time to paint, if you're using rattle can, make sure you give the can a good shake. As you're spraying, make sure you're keeping the can moving. Anytime you stop will result in a big buildup of paint and can lead to drips. Make sure you overlap the strokes by about 50% to get a good even coverage. When it comes to the process of using primer versus not, using clear coat versus not, it's always best to follow the instructions on the can of paint that you're using. On the driver's side, I did do a primer. On the passenger side, I didn't. I wanted to see what the difference long term would be using primer on one side and paint only on the other. And I did not clear coat any of this surface. Most paint manufacturers recommend one or two light coats and then one or two heavy coats of paint. After priming, I did two light coats and two heavy coats of paint. Now, once you're done and you pull all the tape off, you may find some areas that you didn't get taped well or you got paint where you didn't want to, so it's time to do some cleanup. On big surfaces like this, using acetone in a rag works pretty good. If it's an odd-shaped component, you can use a wire wheel to strip the paint off. If you get paint on a bolt, you can always take it off and either clean it in acetone or use a wire wheel to remove the paint. And if you get paint anywhere else in the garage, you're going to want to use a cleaner that's appropriate for the surface that you're cleaning. There are some things that you just really absolutely do not want to get paint on. This piece of foam around the heater core is one of them. There's not really anything that works very well to get this paint off that won't also destroy the foam. So again, if you do not want paint on it, make sure 
that you're covering it up. And finally, if you wanna go the extra mile and make it look even better, you can always do some sanding and wet sanding and really get an amazing finish. I'm pretty happy with the way this came out, and let's face it, the engine compartment is not gonna be the star of this show. So there we have it. Once we have everything out, this is actually a pretty easy process to follow. And of course, there's tons of other ways you could do this. You could buy a paint gun and compressor and do it that way. You could remove everything and have it done professionally as well. With so many things, the more time, effort and let's face it money you spend usually the better job it's going to be and the longer it probably lasts but i got a pretty good feeling this isn't the last paint job this engine compartment is gonna see all right i'm gonna wrap it up there questions comments you know what to do if you like the video give it a thumbs up on youtube i always appreciate that i'll have links down in the description for all the things that i used in this video if you want exclusive content discounts you can't get anywhere else to places like adams polishes Eurowise. Eastwood, Black Forest Industries, NT Knives, Sonic Tools, and more, check out the crew membership program. You can also support the show by using my Amazon affiliate link, as well as supporting me over on Patreon. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Snapchat. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Happy painting, and I'll see you next time.